So I'm going to move to joint B. I don't have to follow around in alphabetical order. I can go in any order I like, and I can treat it a little bit like a crossword. I can go from the easy joint, pick another easy question, pick another easy joint. Uh, you don't have to slavishly go around alphabetically, and sometimes if you try and do that, it can lead you down a, um, a cul-de-sac. Right, I'm going to draw out joint B. Again, at a reasonable size, joint B. Let's say I'm going to add information on that I know. Yeah, that's 50. And it's got a diagonal member in joint B, at joint B. And that diagonal member, it's going to have a load triangle. And the load triangle is another way of representing the diagonal force in the member. So the diagonal force in the member can also be represented by its vertical component and its horizontal component. Take your pick. So FBE can be represented by V and H acting together. That's at 90 degrees. And then I have FBC at the top. Great. For this, I think I'll start by resolving vertically. So if I resolve vertically, the vertical forces acting at this joint B are 50 and V. I'm going to ignore this diagonal member for the moment because I'm choosing to look at its vertical and horizontal components instead. Anything horizontal has no effect when I resolve vertically. So minus 50 assuming that V acts upwards, plus V equals zero. Therefore V equals 50, and that was correct. It is acting upwards. Now if I know that V is acting upwards by 50, then I also know that VBE must be acting upwards. So if that's acting up and to the left, then H must also be acting to the left. And I can use the triangle of forces here to work out both H and FBE. Because I know that this angle here is 45 degrees. So I'm just going to use trigonometry or Pythagoras to do this. Let's work out FBE first. Um, so I need a relationship between this, this side of the triangle and this side of the triangle. So the sine of 50 equals... Oh, sorry, the sine of... 45 equals 50 divided by FBE. Therefore, FBE equals 50 over sine 45, which just so happens to be 70.7 kilonewtons. Great. As soon as I know that, write it on. I know that, that's acting up. I go back to my base diagram and draw this off because it's pushing up at one end, it's pushing down at the other. It's a member that's in compression. Now I'm going to work out H. I'm going to work that out using the tan of 45. The tangent of 45 <coughs> is 50 over H. Therefore, H equals 50 over tan 45. Tan 45 is 1, so it equals 50. Okay, Shouldn't be surprised about that. 45 degree triangle. It's also an isosceles triangle, therefore these two sides are going to be the same. Great. Does that help me? Yeah, it does, because now I'm going to resolve horizontally at this joint. If I resolve horizontally at the joint, Look for all the horizontal forces. Well, there's H and there's FBC. V is vertical, 50 is vertical, ignore them. So when I resolve horizontally, let's assume that FBC is acting to the right. I've got plus FBC minus 50, that's the horizontal component of the diagonal member, all adds up to zero. Therefore, FBC equals 50 kilonewtons. It's acting to the right. As soon as I know that, I can add it onto all my diagrams. Careful to add it to my base diagram. 50. It's in tension because it's pulling at that point, so it must be pulling here. 
There we go. Let's move on to joint. I think the next joint is going to be joint C. These are always really easy joints because <laughs> when you look at the joint and think about resolving vertically, you can see that there is only one member at the joint. Therefore, there is only one force at the joint. And if this joint's ever going to be in equilibrium, that's got to be zero. Because if there's any force whatsoever in this member, it's going to put the joint out of uh, equilibrium. So I'll draw out joint C. That's a reasonable size. Add on all the information I know. There we go. FCD and FCE. Okay, if I resolve vertically, like I was discussing a moment ago, I can see that there are no vertical forces, therefore FCE equals zero. Add that onto the base diagram. Zero. Now for this joint, I'm going to resolve horizontally. Resolve horizontally. There we go. Got minus 50. And I'll assume that FCD is acting to the right, so it's positive. Plus FCD. I'll add up to zero. Therefore, FCD equals 50 kilonewtons. And it is indeed acting to the right. Go back to my base diagram. Add that on. Okay, we're getting close, just a couple more joints to go. Actually, if we finish at joint D, uh, we'll have all the information we need because there's only one member left, but we'll use joint E as a check. Okay, so let's get to joint D. And first thing I do is draw it out at a reasonable scale, reasonable size, I should say. Not exactly to scale, is it? Try to get it in proportion. Add on all the information we've got. Don't forget the load that's pulling down by 50 kilonewtons. And because I've got a diagonal member, I've got a couple of, uh, I've got a load triangle with a vertical and a horizontal component. So the question is, uh, what do I do now? Well, resolve vertically or horizontally, so I'm going to resolve vertically. Resolve vertically, ignoring anything that's horizontal or diagonal, because the diagonal force, sorry, remember F, D, E, that's represented by its two horizontal and vertical components. Okay, let's resolve vertically, so I've got 50 coming down, minus 50, let's assume V is going up, plus V, all adds up to zero. Therefore, V equals 50 kilonewtons. And it's acting up. Okay, that's good. Well, I've got my load triangle again. And once again, I've got an angle on one side so I can find out everything I need about the other two forces in the load triangle. So if I... Take the sine of 45, yeah, that should help me. So the sine of 45 is opposite 50 divided by the hypotenuse, which is FDE. Therefore, FDE equals 50 over sine 45, which is 70.7 kilonewtons. Now, because the vertical component is acting upwards, the diagonal force in FDE must be acting upwards, and it's also acting rightwards. And that's going to have a value of 70.7. So I'm going to go on to my base diagram and draw it in. 70.7, acting upwards at the top. If it's in compression at the top, it must be compression at the bottom. And that's right, that's my diagram complete. What I'm going to do is run a check. It is so easy to make mistakes uh, when you do structural calculations. So the best thing to do is now I've completed this diagram is to carry out a check. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to check by uh, uh, working through joint E. 
Let's see how it looks jumpy. Two now I remember. So I'm going to draw out the load triangle for both of the diagonal members. I'm going to add on all the forces that I know, the directions. It takes a minute. Now, I know that at the opposite end of member B, E, at joint B, I've already drawn out the load triangle. At B, the diagonal members heading upwards and leftwards, and its vertical and horizontal components are both 50. At the bottom of member B, E, it's, it's acting downwards and to the right. So for these vertical and horizontal components, they'll be the same size, but just different directions. They'll be acting downwards and to the right. So they'll still be 50, but because this is heading down and to the right, these are also heading down and to the right. Similarly, for member DE, this is E here, at the top, it's heading upwards and to the right, the bottom is heading down to the right, down and to the left, down and to the left. Well, we've already worked this out at 50, and I can tell you that because this is an isosceles triangle, the horizontal component is also 50. Now we've got joint E, um, we've got the diagram neatly drawn out, so now we can carry out our check. This is our check joint. We're not getting any further with this, we're just making sure we're not uh, going to get an answer that's wrong. We're doing our best to, to, to get that way. Let's resolve horizontally. No, let's resolve vertically. Let's resolve vertically. We seem to have done that first each time. So I've got minus 50 in this member. I've got zero in this member. I've got minus 50 here. And that's telling me I may have made a mistake drawing out Joint E. Yep, I have made a mistake. I need to include the reaction force of 100 kilonewtons upwards. Oops, there it is. I'll add that on. 100. Now I can include that in my uh, vertical resolution. 100 going up plus 100. The whole thing adds up to zero. Therefore, that's okay so far. Let's check resolving horizontally. There we go. We've got plus 50 from this member. Nothing in this member. This is vertical, so it has no effect. I've got minus 50 in this diagonal. And the vertical reaction here has no effect. Does that lot equal zero? Yes, it does. That's that. So joint E tells me that my check uh, shows that what I've done so far is correct and I end up with my base diagram. I've done it neatly enough that that can act as my summary diagram. If you're doing a set of calcs you'd probably produce a fresh diagram at the end just to make sure that it was nice and clear for the next person who had to pick up your results and make use of them. Well that's the method of joints tutorial for a small crane like structure and I uh, hope that made sense.